Hi, and welcome to 2017 Paper 1 of the Junior Shared Higher Level. We're on question 12 here. Uh, before we go on, I suggest you try these questions. And if you want the copy or a copy of the screen grabbed uh, questions and then the answers on the next page, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and I'll forward it back to you. Okay, so question 12 here, we're looking at uh, part A. Well, part A is worth 5C marks. And we're asked to factorize the expression. Now it's an expression, not an equation, because there's no equal. So we can't solve it. And the expression is n squared. So it's a second order um, polynomial, you could call it. Um, but we often refer to that as a quadratic. Okay, so n squared uh, minus 11 times n plus 18. Now, I have the answer on the next page, but how there's, I suppose with quadratics, there's three types. One full quadratic like this, we have three terms. One where you're absent the end term. Okay, and there's a different way of factors than that. And one where you're absent the middle term. Okay, I think we'll come across the um, the second type there that I mentioned. Um, one with no um, middle term later on in, the, in this question. So this type of question here, this is how I'd, I learned how to do it, I suppose. Um, there's you know, different ways of doing it, but I would have taught it as well as opening up two brackets. Okay, now the variable here is n, not x, okay, but it's, it's much the same. Uh, if you want to solve it with x on the side and then replace it with n, if that makes you more familiar, but at you your higher level, it shouldn't be necessary. So you start with, because there's a 1 here, okay, 1, sorry, apologies, it would be n, and n you'd fill in here, okay, and you're looking then to find out what the two uh, values are here. Now those two values would represent the, the factors of this equation, so with my method, okay, you're looking at this 18 here. And um, what two numbers will multiply to give plus 18? Okay. Now, uh, the factors I have with 9 and 2 would work. Okay. Um, what's now? Let's see. 6 and 3. Okay. And 18 times 1. Okay. Now, the minus version of both them would also work. So... 9 times 2 would be 18. So would minus 9 times minus 2 be equal to plus 18. Minus by minus is plus. Same thing with the other two. Um, I'm not going to go through them because I have the answer. You're looking at which of those three factors in this case would add to give minus 11. Now plus 9 plus 2 is plus 11, so that's gone. Minus 9 plus minus 2 would give you minus 11. Okay, so minus 9... Um, plus negative 2, okay, would be equal to the minus 11. So, I'll go through, I might as well go through the other ones. 6 and 3 um, would multiply to give 18. Minus 6 minus 3 would multiply to give plus 18. But there's no way they can add to give minus 11. Same thing with 18 and 1. There's no way they can combine to give minus 11. So, minus 9 minus 2 is your two factors. Uh, I can write them in there. Okay, minus 9 minus 2. Now, we'll, one way of thinking about this is, okay, if you're not right, then this shouldn't reverse. Everything in maths must be reversible, otherwise it's not true. So I've factorized the quadratic I was given, found the two factors. If I multiply them together, do what the brackets say and multiply, then I should return to the original answer. So let's do it, okay, just for the practice, even of multiplying a two-term bracket by a two-term bracket, which is a common mistake people make. They only multiply the first term by the first term, the second term by the second term. Um, and that's not the, the correct answer. So I need to make sure that I multiply the n by both these terms and the minus 9 by both these terms. And there's different ways of doing it. There's methods you can write out. I'm going to do it the fast way and just track it along. So n times n is n squared. Okay, n by itself is squared. And then n times negative 2 is negative 2n. Ne so I've done, the f I've done that first bit. Okay, n is multiplied by both things. Now, the negative 9 by n is negative 9n. Okay. And the negative 9 by negative 2. Negative by negative is positive. 9 times 2 is 18. Now, if you can see it, okay, uh, if I combine them, just to simplify it, minus, uh, I owe you 2 apples, I borrow 9 more off you, I owe you 9 more, I now owe you 11 apples. So it's 11, uh, negative 11n. Now, you see the answer just there, I've done it quicker, okay, but this, you don't necessarily need all the extra work. It was just to, in one way to try to explain it better. 
So we'll go back to B here now. Okay, so factor is fully this expression here. Uh, w times y minus y uh, minus 1 plus w. Now, usually with juniors to a higher level, you might have to rearrange these. But I've just done this already, um, and it's actually a simpler version of it. So, we just split, split the expression in two. And I'm looking for what can I withdraw from this first two terms? Is there any common to them? Well, y is common, so if I pull y out, okay... It's like dividing both terms by y. So wy divided by y would be, the y's would cancel, you're left with w. Uh, if I divide y by y, you get 1. So it's negative 1 left there. Now, if I just, before I go any further, if I was to multiply the y back into the bracket, would I return to the original question? So y times w would be yw, which is the same thing as wy. y times negative 1 is negative y. So it does return. So I've done nothing um, incorrect here. Okay, I just want to hope it works for the for the next two terms. If this does work, then I should be able to withdraw uh, the same thing. So w minus one. That's that's my uh, one of my one of my factors. Can I get it to work here? So now this is you could argue they should be swapped around. Um, if I pull out now, this is tricky. If I pull out positive one, okay, it won't change those. Okay, but it is uh, a, a perfectly sound thing to do. Okay. Because when I reverse this, plus 1 by w is w, which is the term here. Uh, plus 1 by negative 1. Plus by negative is negative. Uh, 1 times 1 is 1. So that's that's there. So my two factors end right, I think this is y plus 1. Okay. Uh, times uh, w minus 1. Okay. Let's use the, um, the writing. So if I was to reverse that, okay, um, like go through it quickly, okay, y times w is y w is this w y, guess y w w y, uh, y times negative one is negative y, um, one times w is the w here, and one times negative one is negative one here. So I've been able to reverse the, the work I've done, so it's, it's it's mathematically sound, and there are my two factors. Okay, so that's part B, where five C. And there's the answer here, just done out, okay? Now, this is bread and butter stuff, um, in the sense that it will come up fairly regularly, if not all the time, okay, in paper one, and good marks to get. So, we're looking here at part C, okay? Now, I can let you read that there, okay? I'm probably going to be repeating it, so I'm not going to read through it. But here I have, again, an ex it's an expression. Now, there is an equal in the text of the question, but that's just saying that x is 4. Okay, so you can ignore that for the time being, okay? This is what we're focused on here. Now, that's an expression. Now, it's an algebraic uh, expression, okay? It's an algebraic fraction expression, uh, and it looks fairly intimidating, okay? Now, some questions in some years they'd ask, they'd give that equal to something and you have to solve it. That's trickier, okay? In this case, it's actually just substitution. They're saying here that evaluate that expression when x is 4. So they're telling you what the unknown is, okay? So it's just a matter of putting it in. Now I'm going to go to the text because it'll be clearer than my uh, attempt to write. Okay, so that's the expression uh, copied from the question. Okay, and then instead of x, I put 4 in brackets. Instead of x here, I put 4 in brackets. Now at this stage, okay, that could be programmed into the calculator. Okay, and you just go straight to the answer. You could work it down piecemeal, but I would suggest, you know, that first of all, you show your work. Okay, and that by showing your work, this is the, the bit that, that would prove that. So if you do make a mistake here in the calculator, okay, then you'll still do fairly well um, because you've done the exact perfect thing. Um, if you don't write this out, and I uh, see this a lot, um, students end up with the wrong answer, no work shown. That's just plainly incorrect. That's zero. Okay. Um, so be very careful. Make sure you do put things in your brackets. So when you're programming it into the calculator, it will do the right operation. In this case, multiply of those uh, 3 times 4. And that's it. Happy days. Okay, so part C there. Now part D here is a little trickier. Okay, um, I was saying earlier that uh, this is one of the type of quadratics okay, you have to solve. Uh, it's a little bit harder than the version we normally see, in the sense that it's 4 times e squared minus 9. But again, it's, not, it's an expression. Okay, it's not, a, not an equation. So we're going to have to factorize, and you're told what to do. If I factorize the top and factorize the bottom, it'll become uh, very clear what to do. Okay, so this thing here on top is the difference of two squares. Now, normally we see it like this, okay? Um, you may see it like, well, I'm just going to use E for consistency. 
and let's see e squared minus 25. Okay, and you'd open up two brackets. Now, with the difference of two squares, it's always plus and minus. And you square root uh, uh, the numbers in front of both things. So in this case, it's 1. So square root of 1 is 1. Okay, so that just stays as e, and this stays as e. Square root of 25 is 5. So you write that number in here and here. Now, if I was to reverse that by multiplying it out, I'd return back to my original. You should try that. Okay, people just pause the video and just give it a go. Now, with the 4e squared, okay, it's a little bit trickier in the sense that you have to, that normally kind of, you don't really think about the number in front of the, the squared variable. But if that was square root as well, you get 2. And you just add it, uh, if I get it in there, 2 in here and a 2 in here. Now again, if you multiply that, it would reverse back to its original. So the top part is there, okay? Now the bottom part is just the factorization, just like we had in part A. It's a little trickier in the fact that the two here um, makes it slightly more complicated, okay? Now I'll do that down here, okay? So I have my two e squared plus uh, three e uh, minus nine. Now, with the method I would have learned, okay, I would just look for a guide number by multiplying the first number, which you don't normally have to do, this is 1, by the minus 9. So I would end up with, now look at it over here, minus 18. So I'm looking for what two numbers will multiply to give minus 18, but add to give plus 3. Okay, so I open up my two brackets, and I'd have my in 2e. That's supposed to be an e and a 2e here and you're looking for what these two numbers are here okay so the factors here would be 18 times 1 now let's be fast here that will never add to give 3 okay um 9 times 2 now 9 and 2 will never add to give 3 if you think about it 6 times 3 that has promise okay so we're just determining the signs now now to get minus 18 both those would have to be different okay if that was minus 6 times minus 3, the answer would be plus 18. You want this, uh, when, if they were to add together, those two numbers we found, uh, would they give plus 3 as an answer? So you want them to be different signs, and you want the bigger one to be plus. So if that was plus 6 times negative 3, it would give multiply to give minus 18, add to give plus 3. So there are two numbers, so plus 6 and negative 3. Okay, so... So to finish off here, we just need to um, look at simplifying one of the factors. Okay, now this is caused by the fact that the method, um, we put 2e and 2e in, and it's always the one you can divide by a common uh, denominator. So if you divide here both these by 2, you'd end up with e plus 3, okay, times uh, 2e minus 3. Now again, if you multiply those two uh, factors together, you return to the original equation, so it's proof that it's correct. Now, if I was to swap both those answers in, uh, instead of the top and the bottom, okay, that's what it looks like here, um, done out digitally as such. So that's the two factors. Now, if something's common top and bottom, they cancel, okay, and you're left with one, okay. So 2e minus 3 is common to 2e minus 3, so they're gone. And you're left with this expression, this expression here, okay. And that's it, okay, so just explaining what I've done here, uh, that's my answer. This part D is worth 5D max. <coughs> now our part E here, things are getting trickier now. I think this is the last part. Yeah, okay. So this is your, you've got a, a rectangle here. They're saying the area of the rectangle is described by this cubic equation. There's a third order polynomial. We often just call that cubic. And it's found by multiplying the length, what's the the length, by the width. The length is given in general form quadratic. And the uh, breadth is a factor of um, that cubic equation. Now, we can, there's different things they can ask with cubic equations. Normally, they're probably going to involve, like, if you know, if you follow that method, long division of a uh, factor into the cubic. So we'll go through them in a minute. But let's read the question to make sure I'm not missing anything. And, of course, I should point it out every uh, video lesson, but it's important to read the question not once, not twice, not three times, as many times as you need. So you're in an exam situation, nobody knows you needed to read it four times, and they probably need to read it five times, so no one's judging, okay? So I often 
The times I don't read these questions multiple times are the times I mess up. Okay, I miss a word, I miss a thing, and I, I, I maybe do a beautiful question, but I've, I've answered the wrong thing. And that's, it's, it's, it's practically useless. So a rectangle has sides of length x minus 3 units. Okay, they're not given as, so we're going to be careful with this. It's not centimeters, not meters, just units. We may need to put the units in the end, okay? We always should, even if we don't, we don't need to. And you have this a times x squared plus b times x plus c units. That's the, the length. Where a and b and c are elements of z, and that doesn't really matter too much, okay? But this means they're all whole numbers. Okay, no fractions. The area of the rectangle is given by this cubic equation, 2 to the times x to the power of 3, minus 13 times x to the power of 2, plus 25 times x, minus 12. And that's square units because it's an area. So we have to find the values of a, b, and c, okay, given in the quadratic here. There's different ways of doing this, okay? Um, if you if you understand, what, even from the 10 mark here, it's a 10d scale, so any relevant work will get the 4. If I realize that length times breadth gives area and write that down, I most likely have the lower partial 4. If I go ahead and try multiply x minus 3 by the quadratic here, I'm probably on the mid partial 6. Um, and I might be doing that without having any clue why I'm doing it, just to do something. Okay, so that's good. That's good. So let's look at the answer here because it's, it's very detailed. Now, in, there's, I've detailed two methods here. I've taken them from the marking scheme. But in the first method, you're multiplying your factor by the quadratic, and that should result in the cubic equation. But you're doing it in general, which means you have to equate. So if x minus 3 times the general form here equals the cubic equation, well then when you do multiply that out, the a corresponds to the first term here. Okay. Now, um, if you look at it here, the a in front of the x is power 3, so we're dealing with this first, that number is 2. So a is 2. Now the bx squared, there's, there's, two, there's 2 x squareds in this. So bx squared, or b times x squared, minus 3 times a times x squared equals to uh, minus 13. So I've done that down here at the bottom, okay? Now that looks like they're setting up for similar equations until you cop that you already have a. A is 2. So that's an equation of two unknowns. Now it's an equation of one unknown because you know A. So substitute A in instead and calculate it out and I got negative 7. So now I have B. Okay, so almost there. Now the C value here, if you look at it, I've used this up here and I've used this up here. You're looking at the C value um, being the number here at the end. Okay, now the X term, um, that plus CX, negative, take away or subtract 3 times B times X, that's this here. Now I could use that, but it'd be going down a harder, well not harder, but a longer route. Uh, the simpler way to look at it is that minus 3c equates to this minus 12. So minus, I've done it here, just got the answer here. Uh, minus 3c equals minus 12, therefore c equals plus 4. You can always work it out yourself on a piece of paper, just to prove I'm right. Now that's method 1, okay. Now method 2 would be the way I'd probably most students would do it. Uh, because it's formulaic and metal, metal, metallurgical, okay, if that's a word. But you're looking at dividing the factor x minus 3 into the cubic equation. Now, I haven't done it here fully, okay, so I've got to go through it, and it is fairly time-consuming. Uh, so if you know this method, you might as well stop now, okay, and see you on question 13. But if you're not familiar with this method or you're not sure of it, uh, hopefully I'll be able to help you out, okay. So if I divide the x into the first term here, so 2x cubed divided by x gives you this 2x squared on top. Okay, that's the first bit. You now do the opposite, okay, and you multiply that 2x squared by the x, and your answer is 2x to the power of 3. You go back to the original. You write that here. You also multiply this negative 3 by 2x squared, and that gives me negative 6x squared. Okay. Now, to keep going, okay, you're going to change the signs here. I'll do it in a nice bright color. Okay, so it's minus, the plus becomes minus, and the minus here becomes plus, and you join those things together. So 2x power 3 cancels, uh, minus 13 apples, add 6 apples, uh, gives you um, negative 7 apples. Now, being, once it's condescending, but I don't mean to be, um, it's often more just leaving out the x squared and that, con that you know, difficult concept. I just think, um, somebody owes me 13 something, they pay me back 6. How many do they still owe me? And that usually makes more sense. Okay. So you end up there with the negative 7x squared. Now, 
So go back to the black marker here, and we are looking now at doing the exact same thing again. Okay, so you divide the x into the negative 7x squared. That cancels one of the x's, you're left with uh, minus 7x. Then you're going to reverse that and multiply the minus 7x by x, and you get minus 7x squared. I'm going to do the same thing with the minus 3 here. Minus 3 times minus 7x is plus 21x. Let me write that there. Then you go ahead and change the signs. Okay, just for, I hope this makes a bit more sense. Bear with me one second. And I'm going to now change the signs. So it's a positive here, negative changes to positive, and the positive here changes to a negative. So it's minus 7x squared plus 7x squared, they cancel, we have a zero. 25x, take away 21x, you're left with the 4x down here. Now we go again, okay, and we're going to basically divide this first term of this layer as such by the x. So 4x divided by x gives you with the 4 here. Then do the opposite. Multiply the 4 by the x, you get 4x. Then multiply the 4 by the negative 3, just like the last two times, and you get negative 12. Then you're going to come along and change the signs. I'm not going to change color here. Uh, plus changes to a minus. This minus changes to a plus. So 4x take away 4x is gone. 0 is cancelled. Minus 12 plus 12 is 0. Cancelled. So you have no remainder. Okay. So you've divided this factor, x minus 3, into the cubic equation and found the remaining two factors in, qu in quadratic form. Now you don't need to solve for factors here. You're simply looking at that's your quadratic and then you're reading off your values of a, b and c. So a is the first term. In front of the x squared is 2, b is the number in front of the x, which is negative 7, and c is the number at the end, which is the plus 4. That corresponds to the a here, the minus 7 corresponds to the b here, and c corresponds to the c at the end. Job done. Okay, so there's just two ways of doing it. You don't have to do it both ways, okay? Um, there's two ways of looking at it, but that was a fairly tricky part. That's why it's given the 10d scale. But again, by doing a decent um, attempt of trying to multiply something by something else, you could very possibly have gotten the mid partial 6. Okay, thank you very much, and see you in question 13.